on Cup Day 2005, could Maccabi Diva become the first horse to win a hat-trick of Melbourne Cups? Maccabi Diva didn't come with a flash, but she just got better and better and better. She wasn't anything special to look at. It wasn't so much her appearance that took me, it was uh, when I got on her back. The feeling that she gave me, that's what was, that was immediately special. Again here at the 300, frightening with Maccabi Diva going for a run. She's finishing hard and right around now, Penn Testing is joining in. And she's Archie runs on, but Maccabi Diva shot away. She's out by two lengths to she's Archie. Penn Testing and Zagalia, Maccabi Diva in front. She's Archie tries hard, but Maccabi Diva wins the cup. Maccabi Diva was named from the first initials of five female staffers at the Port Lincoln tuna fishing operation of owner Tony Santic. After she won the cup in 2003, trainer David Hall moved to Hong Kong and Lee Friedman took over her preparation for 2004. I've never been so confident about a horse winning, even a maiden up the bush. Preparation had been perfect. The 2004 Cup was to be a classic confrontation. Our diva against the Dermot World trained winner of four Irish St Ledgers, Vinnie Rowe. He's got great power in his hind legs, uh, great strength in his hocks, uh, great barrel to him, and he's a lovely foreleg, plenty of bone to him. And uh, his neck is nicely set on his body, which gives him balance. He's a great head, good bold eye, Lovely big ears and a great positive outlook. Shortly before post time, a wild storm lashed Flemington. The cup was an epic. It was a world heavyweight championship, pretty much the same as boxing. It was the best staying horse from the Northern Hemisphere and the best staying horse from the Southern Hemisphere meeting at a distance that would suit both of them. Racing in the Emirates Melbourne Cup. To that horse's credit, Vinnie Rowe, he gave everything in that run. Here comes Vinnie Rowe, Elstrom coming with him, Maccabi Diva. That would have won 99 out of 100 Melbourne Cups, he just ran into a champion. She's got right up on the inside, Maccabi Diva. She's hit the front now from Vinnie Rowe and Zesman. It's Maccabi Diva clear. She's out by two lengths to Vinnie Rowe. It's Maccabi Diva clear, and she's going to do what no mare has ever done. Maccabi Diva. She could start a run five furlongs out, a thousand metres out, and just continue it. And she knew she had radar in her head. She seemed to know where that line was. She was a great racer, you know, as opposed to just a horse that could win a race. She knew how to race and, and she knew where the line was. In 2005, Maccabi Diva tackled the Wait for Age Cox Plate ten days before the Melbourne Cup. And Her victory was breathtaking, but it came at a cost. Not many people noticed, but after the Cox Plate straight away, when the strapper went, I grabbed the horse and walked it round myself, because I wanted to see what her recovery was like, and I thought her recovery was pretty ordinary, to be honest. And I even might have said that night, I said, I don't think, I don't think we're gonna be there. I wasn't aware at the time just how much the Cox Plate had taken out of her, and uh, apparently she was pretty well bottomed uh, after that win. We had to be very careful of what we were doing with her after that, from that point, especially from the Cox Plate on. You know, um, so we really didn't want to be pushing the barrier and just have her do a dulcify, you know, and be injured on a track, on a racetrack one day. I think that would have been, you know, we would have been crucified for something like that. Not since Farlap had a horse received so much attention. A-listers sought an audience with the diva. 
And everyone had an opinion on whether she would or should be given the chance to go for a record third Melbourne Cup. I've never seen anything like it in racing. Um, by that stage, she'd become public property. The press and they were jumping out of trees. And, you know, she was on the front page of every newspaper throughout Australia for, I think, five days in a row. Had she been hurt in any way or failed badly, then images of all of them would have been tarnished. What sort of reaction might there have been if things had gone wrong? Uh, probably a lynching. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had, we had a good sense of, of, of some sort of responsibility to the public. At that stage, even small children and, and people that had no interest in racing knew that horse's name. Boss, Friedman and owner Tony Santic were looking for a sign. And at track work three days before the cup, she gave the signal. Gallops were on Saturday morning at Mornington. What she did on that Saturday morning, all the clockers who had been at Mornington clocking for 20 or 30 years were comparing times of what she'd done on the track that morning and they simply just couldn't believe what this horse was capable of because it was, it just blew them away. And I come back and it was simply not words, what I said, it was just a look and he knew straight away. So that was pretty well, we were on, on, on the way. You've got until five o'clock to pay up. Have you done it already? No, but I'm about to. She'll be paid up to run. Uh, give her a shot at history. Seven News with Jennifer Kite. Good evening. The question the whole nation has been asking has finally been answered. Maccabi Diva will attempt to win her third Melbourne Cup this Tuesday. And if she wins, she'll do what no horse has done before. All I was really hoping for then was that she ran well and she was unharmed through the race and um, she was safe afterwards. I remember walking down the roses going out on the track and she was just like she was going for a jog in the morning, you know, she was so relaxed, had her head down, she was cruisy. The crowd was absolutely going crazy as she was walking down the roses. There's a lot of noise, it's quite deafening when you've got sort of, you know, obviously 120,000 people race, but you've got probably 40 or 50,000 right there and they're on top of you. And they're just screaming out for one horse. So, and I remember looking at my shoulder as we went out and other horses, are, you know, they're going sideways and they're half losing it a bit and the jockey's trying to keep their horses calm and she was just like, you know, how good is this? And that was like, she's on the ball today. This is history unfolding. This has never happened before and it'll never happen again. I'd thought about it pretty much the night before, what I was going to say, and she already was a champion. We all knew that, but I thought if she does this, she's, she's just a legend. She's starting to wind up. 300 left to go now. McKayvey Deaver's racing up. Envoy's trying to go with it. They've got the Portland Singer and Lachlan River. Here comes like a falcon and excellent. But McKayvey Deaver clear with 100 metres to go. Excellent runs to second. On a zoom runs on. But a champion becomes a legend. McKayvey Deaver has won it. Go and find the smallest child on this course because they will be an example of the only person here that will live long enough to see something like that again. We'll never live to see it again. The odds are that the smallest child there will never see that happen again. And we can finally mention Maccabi Diva and Farlat maybe in the same breath. 
No, I don't want to run Farlap down, but I never saw Farlap win three Melbourne Cups. We all decided after this great race today, she is retired as of today. When they've won that much, it's not about the money anymore, it's about protecting their greatness, really. There was never going to be a bigger stage than a third Melbourne Cup win to retire on, and, and we respected that greatness and the welfare of the horse, and we decided to retire on the day, and I think it was a good decision. She just rode off into the sunset.